So thanks, Samantha. Uh, really great to have you uh, in our in our fun car interviews um, while we uh, negotiate to make sure we don't try to go to Canada, uh, which is always kind of an exciting little moment here because if you get trapped in the wrong lane, uh-huh. you all of a sudden are at customs. Uh, so that's uh, not something we want to have. Um, Cause I don't know if you have your passport. I don't have my passport on me. I I don't have, and I don't even have a visa, so I would be like <laughs> the, uh, be sent back hard. home. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so uh, yeah. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what you've been working on since we last talked? Sure. So first of all, thanks for having me here in this interview. It's been absolute pressure, pleasure, and I really enjoy this. We, off late, I've been working on a project called Conveyor. I am really, really excited about it. It's about application modernization. Every company goes through this. Like right now, they're all heavily investing in hybrid cloud and cloud and containerization. And they have this giant working apps, and they are still working. And if it's working, no one wants to touch it. But then right. they have already invested so much money into like cloud and whatnot, and you want to move those apps. So you're saying yeah. that paying for a data center and a cloud and all that is not, you know, goal in itself. <laughs> you know, it's like people don't want to just pay for it to do nothing. Yeah. They, they do, they do. Uh, yeah. But but the thing is that it's like getting revolutionized and like yeah. when everyone does it, you also want to like um, get on the train and then right. like be a part of this awesome journey. Uh, so that's what like I'm uh, doing right now. In the modernization, we help the older applications and we try to give them an estimate assess and what needs to be changed um, to refactor and the platform and the Kubernetes. Um, so that's a pro- that's what the project's about. And it has like super cool, interesting things. And the most interesting part for me is I'm building the community. Nice, it's, nice, yeah. Yeah. I recently got accepted into CNCF, so it's a CNCF sandbox project. So that gives me the awesome opportunity to, to to actually build it. Right. And you know the beauty of whatever I learned in Kubernetes, I'm taking them all, and not the heavy process because this is a small pro- right, pro- right. project. And so I'm taking them all and like distilling it, and then taking the little things that will work for the current project, and I'm like doing that to conveyor. So it's been like working pretty great. Less work for me. Yeah, right. So, okay, so here's the question I have to ask here. So um, I've built a number of communities, you know, kind of over my career. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you, what have you found to be like the most surprising thing that you learned while trying to build this community that you just, it never would have crossed your mind? Uh, do you have anything like that? Yeah, I'm still building the community, but the one thing that uh, stumbles me these days is the, amount of um, like the ways that you have to use it's just not about mailing list anymore so you have to be a savvy with all the technologies yeah, that yeah. kind of like stumps me mm-hmm. on top of the human factor like these days the attention span of everyone's like super limited and be it part of the community or anything to keep them interested mm-hmm. it's really lo- uh, it's really hard to like keep someone interested so you have to do really, really good work. So like I'm trying to balance like not to introduce so many stuff, but also like give them a safe space. I want to create a safe space right. for everyone. That is the part that I find the hardest because I can do all the work that mm-hmm. um, needs to be done, but still there are like X number of things that's like out of my hands. Um, mm-hmm. So I should know how to react in that moment, and how to handle a particular given situation. So right. all those things I'm still figuring out. I'm not an expert and it's good to know that you have done a lot of these so I can like, you're a text away. So I'll yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> like, ask, yeah, hey, I, I'm I am happy to help. Uh, yeah, the reason I, I'm always curious about that sort of thing about most kinds of activities, like, mm-hmm. what, you know, so I relatively recently became, you know, an academic full time, right? And uh, the thing that one of the things that's been most surprising to me is how different the cadence of fall semester is versus spring semester. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And because it's where the break falls, because Thanksgiving yeah. is so late relatively speaking in spring break is kind of early right yeah. and so it throws off the the cadence or like the you know speed or whatever of the entire semester or changes it uh, and that's been the hardest thing one of the weirdest things for me to like wrap my head around because um, I never would have guessed that that was such a pronounced effect you know so that's why I was curious um, so what is uh, so uh, the project is officially a sandbox project now yeah. which is uh, very cool what is that? change like what do you feel like that brings to the table for the conveyor project so it's again um everything for me bubbles down to the community but the 
another portion of it that is that there are no open source modernization tools available mm -hmm. so that puts conveyor the unique place where um, it has the potential to collaborate with so many folks so it's going to be like one big community and everyone it's like even though they work for so many different companies mm -hmm. at the end of it it's just going to be community um, and that's one part like I'm super super excited about and the next thing is that the potential of um, like all the new stuff that you can add um, like for example uh, my friends are working on um, so right now the project supports like analysis of Java mm -hmm. application so like you can supply a binary or like a old uh, Java code and then it will do a deep analysis based on some of the rule sets and then it will spit out telling like oh to modernize is in like to re-platform it from the current uh, VM to a um, Kubernetes cluster these are the things that you need to change mm -hmm. and these are the things that are risky and these are the things like it, the amount of time it will take to do it and these are the places where you have to like do like for example you cannot hard code the secret anymore you have to like inject from outside so if it finds a secret it will like highlight it and then it will say like oh your imports are outdated so you have to like do this you have to upgrade the a language like all the little things that you would miss in general mm -hmm. um, so that's what the current capability is the things that people are working on in this project is uh, adding multiple um, languages to it in an extensible way so anyone right. could come and plug in stuff so today we had this conveyor workshop and then we met a couple of folks who attended it and they were saying like they did not have like one of them mentioned that they did not have such a questionnaire which could just give them an all 360 degree view of like how they can uh, they, they didn't know what they got into kind yeah, so yeah, like yeah. it would have been nice that if they had the opportunity to see all these things beforehand and uh, so many it was like nice to have such conversations seeing that bringing so many folks together um, and I think that uh, is possible because it is CNCF project so yeah, it yeah. kind of even though like it was conveyor was always conveyor has always been an open source project um, Red Hat has kept it open source from the start and right now um, but once it became a CNCF project it kind of gets its own you know it's like a status bump yeah I, I should right. say like yeah right so like a lot of eyes on the project and mm -hmm. so many um, companies and folks want to collaborate so it's so cool yeah yeah I, I would imagine I mean it also kind of I feel like it would also give it a certain amount of uh, almost like ratification right like you know it's a pretty good chance this project's gonna stick around so like investing in learning how to use the tool and stuff like that isn't I mean one of the hardest problems you have in the open source world right is that anybody can build anything they want and then they can stop working on it also anytime they want uh, and so I think one of the hard choices is like, you know, should I go with this path or this path? Because if you invest in the wrong one and that project goes away, you know, you're, you're often in quite a lot of trouble. Uh, oh, talk, talk, tell me about it. So I used to be a platform engineer. Yeah. One of the biggest no-no things for me is like pulling in a dependency that is being maintained by one single maintainer. Right. And which is fine. Like one single maintainer is still good. But then you look at the commit history and the project hasn't been touched for like two years and then right. you don't want to build your infrastructure around it and it's like setting it up for failure because right. like your entire thing is just like built around one little thing which is not maintained anymore so that's a big no-no for me and like to put something in production I always make sure that it's not maintained by a single maintainer because yeah. things happen life happens I'm not like saying that they should be responsible for doing it anyone who is like a single project maintainer should be like doing it lifelong it's not right. feasible it's not possible um, so having a good section model or like having multiple people actually helps right yeah no I completely agree I think um, you know I much prefer <coughs> excuse me <coughs> sorry um, we used to start, so I used to do um, some theater work in college and uh, you know, one of the things that you had to create was like the stage manager's book, right? And, and it was the run book for the show and it had every single little detail in it. And in those days we used to call it the hit by the bus factor. Uh -huh. um, 
you know, where, you know, but these days we've been trying to get uh, to take off, right? Something more like the uh, win the lottery factor, right? So, you know, a positive experience instead of a negative one. But, you know, sometimes, as you said, life happens, right? And people want to go in a different direction. Making sure that your, you know, infrastructure isn't going to fall over is really important. Um, you know, you got to have, uh, you know, some way to back that up. Yeah, even like the Cube project got pretty hit due to the pa during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. you know, yesterday, I watched the contributor submit, and someone mentioned that that it saw like a twenty five percent decrease in the amount of contributors. Oh, really? So, oh. and such a project can like it can still withstand because it's huge, so many contributors. But you can think about the um, single maintainers or like projects which are like small, or maintained by like few people. Um, it, it was a lot and it's yeah. still a lot like so many people are still going through burnout and whatnot so mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's one of the things um so i have anecdotal evidence of this as well but um there's actually been some research done about like the new students like freshmen coming in as you know this year mm -hmm. um are kind of very very high strung like uh, you know very kind of their baseline stress level is already very high mm -hmm. and so they're having a lot of trouble with college um, because, yeah, and, and there's no real, nobody's really sure why yet, you know, mm -hmm. but it's probably pandemic related, right? Um, but yeah, like, uh, it's, people are not back yet, you know, like there's some of it. And, it, and I think there's a lot of particularly politicians who want us to be back, but it's just not really true yet, you know? Um, and I think you see that in the open source community as much as anywhere else. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's like no one's like psychologically ready to be honest right, to right. be out and about because like everyone was like confined to their own space for a really long time. So it takes time. Yeah. Sometimes it takes like double the amount of like it's like a cause and effect. It's not like immediate on and off switch. Right. Um, so you say like, oh, you cannot come out of the house for like 10 days and all of a sudden you're like, oh, you should be in a room full of like 10,000 people. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of an adjustment. Well, I mean, I think that's why, you know, you mentioned kind of a safe space. You know, it's like, that's why I think one of the things I also like about open source, uh, you know, particularly ones that have strong communities, is it's a lot easier to kind of, re, you know, re-enter society, um, you know, if it's with a community of people that even if you don't know them particularly well, you, you at least share a lot of like something with, right? Um, you know, in, you know, in the case of conveyor, right? It's, you know, we, we all work on this kind of problem, right? You know, but it doesn't matter what it is, it, but it gives you that, that community and it, it, it's almost like safer to kind of re-engage again and, you know, kind of ease into it rather than, you know, I take public transit all the time, right? A whole bunch of random people who are getting on yeah. the bus, you know, yeah. uh, and you know, I'm the only one wearing a mask. Um, so it, it uh, definitely takes some time getting used to it and the fact that now if you like it almost feels like the roles have reversed so it's like if you are wearing a mask it's like you just get teared down mm -hmm. so you have to have a strong willpower to like keep that going mm -hmm. uh, my family back home like I keep telling them like wear a mask and they're like no one's wearing anymore and like right. they are like they are stuck between the social construct right now like where if they were then they will be like cast out or like you right know, uh, right not ostracized yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i will say boston is uh nice in that regard like as yeah. in it, there's not a lot of that sense of you know you're giving in by wearing a mask um you know so it's pretty tolerant um but on the flip side there's not a lot of people wearing masks uh, you know even on like public transit with like enclosed spaces and stuff so yeah. it's a little you know, it's a little crazy, uh, yeah, but yeah. you know, you do what you got to do, I guess. So let's see, what else can we talk about? Um, there. Oh, so I wanted to. I noticed you looking out the windows. I mean, isn't the view out here? This is Bell Island. It's called oh. or Bell Isle, and uh, it's we're still in the U.S. Even though the river right is basically the demarcation line between the U.S. and Canada. Uh huh. Um, and uh, I don't know. I just thought this little drive around was really pretty. Um, it's super pretty. I'm like, it's so peaceful too. And yeah. thanks for not taking me to Canada. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, we we aren't we aren't completely done yet. There are still opportunities uh, for us to get trapped and go to Canada. Um, so we'll just have to keep our eyes open. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, you've been a lot more involved in at least the Insider Show. Have you been getting more involved in Coup by Example as well? Um, or kind of more broadly, I guess. Um, I would look forward to that. So I'm hoping that I could bring a little bit of conveyor into the Cuba Insider um, 
um, what, like there are like tutorials in the Cuba Insider, which I really like learning parts. Sorry, yeah, I was, I was exactly yeah, yeah. looking for the yeah. word. Like, I want to like bring this uh, in so that like there is a chance that folks can uh, pick it up and like someone wants to contribute or someone wants to just participate. It's just like, you know, it's a nice place. I really um, like the Cuba Insider. Not just a show because I'm on it, and yeah, not, right. not because like I'm also one of the co-hosts, but like yeah. overall I like the people and like the mission too. It's um, catered towards any beginner too. Like if you look at um, some of the Kubernetes stuff there, like part and like learn basic Kubernetes, it's right. hard. Now everyone talks about Kubernetes, but no one explains it like what it is. Like no one says like at the beginner level so it just goes above your head so i'm hoping that we could i i would participate more right. uh, in other avenues that are available like whatever it is i i want to figure it out and i want to like be a part of it more yeah um, it, that's cool i um yeah i've been uh working on a tecton learning path uh for cube by example um and i could definitely see a conveyor one i think one of the things um what I was doing with the Tecton learning path, um, the problem I think with application modernization, right, mm -hmm. is um, it's one of those uh, like software engineering activities where you, when you look at it to go start doing it, it looks pretty straightforward. Uh -huh. And then you kind of get into the weeds and you're like, oh my God, this is so much harder and scarier and everything else than I realized it would be. Yeah. Um, and so mm -hmm. I think using a tool like you know like that and, and i've actually used uh similar tools years and years ago uh -huh. um it's really useful because it gives you a sense of um like like all the in the weeds scary bits uh -huh. before uh -huh. you go in right so you can kind of like get at least a sense of you were kind of saying this before it's like okay we're gonna have to like fix this piece we're gonna have to upgrade that part um, and then if you kind of can know all that before you get into it, you can plan for it properly. You know, you're less likely to be terrified later. So I think it's, um, they're really useful, even if it isn't a, you know, a magic bullet kind of. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think it's like some people expect you to be able to just like plug a button and, you know, magic happens here. Um, I, I like to think it off like this, like in this awesome car, we have like super yeah. many features, right? It's not like... Um, it's doing all the work for you, but then it gives you like a awesome lane assist or like the blind view mirror. Like if some car comes by, the right. blind, the all the all the nice things. Like you can think think of it like that. Like it's not gonna handhold you um, too much, but then it will be like there to assist you with the journey and make your journey easier. So right. that's how like I see it. Um, I know the sorry about the bad analogy. analogy oh, was, like, I, oh, like, I was actually <laughs> going to say it's like it's, it kind of helps you stay in your lane, yeah, right? Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, because I think that is a, a deceptive. It, like you know, I always talk about um, package managers, databases. Those are also very deceptively easy pieces of software. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of get into it, and you're like, wait this transaction has to be atomic, how am I going to make that happen if the, there's a power failure? Um, you know, so database is much harder to write than people realize when they start writing one. Um, uh, I'm super bad at it. Yeah, I would yeah. never uh, touch any database. The um, fun fact is that on my first two weeks of my first real graduate do job, I uh -huh. deleted prediction database without oh, a backup. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, yeah, no good. <laughs> and, and Although, on the flip side, Whose fault was it that there was no backups, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And but I did learn stuff. So I learned a lot of Linux that day because it was yeah. like stored as a file. So the file never actually gets deleted, deleted, even though it oh, goes away. Yeah. So like, the worst part was it was a, fr a Saturday morning before my coffee, and I was like, oh, I'm getting alerts. What is that? Let me check it out. Oh, like I'll just do this, and that's the bad thing. So right, I made right. a rule in my life that I will never do anything just after getting up that two over a weekend. Right. And well, I don't know. I mean, you're doing this interview and you told me that you hadn't had coffee yet today. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the one behind the wheel. So yeah, I'm like, that's true. That's true. <laughs> right. But uh, I completely agree with the uh, rule of must have coffee first. Yeah. And one thing that I want to also bring to KBI, KBI whenever I have a chance is that I want to include a little bit more about the security tracks, you know, like security is also like important and I like to see more of those. And I want to like, if there is time, if, if someone would accept whatever I'm writing, then I'll be like happy to like put all those things um, 
that's another thing that people um, like even the growing engineers and like students and um, you know um, early professional in the career they should like no it's not an afterthought and right there are like so many supply chain attacks and what not so um, yeah I think what's interesting is like as um, as our kind of infrastructure gets more sophisticated mm-hmm. um, there's even more opportunities for us to not really know what's going on mm-hmm. um, and as such really potentially bad security holes mm-hmm. um, and so I think one of the things that um, I like about kind of a lot of the approach to how kind of kubernetes works and things like that is that um, you have um, it's almost like the security is on by default mm-hmm. um, you know Red Hat uh, you know like rel a lot of that is like that too um, so it's it's super nice when you are trying to you know kind of build out an application you know is that as long as I know how to turn the security off mm-hmm. you know I can kind of do my development or stuff and stuff and have things break because of security mm-hmm. and then turn it off while I try to figure out what it is right and then turn it back on I do this with like SE Linux all the time yeah, yeah. you know um, you know I, I leave it on all the time and then if I run into a problem I turn it off make sure that's the problem uh-huh. and then you know and then figure out what it is and then I can turn it back on again um, but I think that that kind of model is becoming ridiculously important um, because there you know so little about about how like because you have this wicked long supply chain yeah yeah um, yep. so yeah I, I definitely would agree um, uh, so uh, you want to talk I can't remember uh, yeah I have a um, so I am one of the I have main trainer track section session for six security okay so like I help um, lead the six security documentation sub project so I am a person who believes everything and starts and ends with documentation so yeah uh-huh. Like you want to hack a project, you read the documentation, you will have everything, even lo- including the loopholes that someone would have missed. So Kubernetes documentation is quite awesome and mm-hmm. extensive. Um, but um, there are places where it could be incru- uh, improved in terms of security. Like um, when, I wo- when I used to work as a platform engineer, I struggled to find the proper RBAC and RBAC is everyone's nightmare right um, so like we want to improve little things like that so uh, when this uh, SIG um, got um, they had the first meeting they said like oh we are forming a new SIG and everything I just raised my hand up and I said like I, I want to volunteer for this I don't know much about security I'm willing to learn um, but uh, I want to volunteer for this because this is what I want to see I want to make this document uh, like documentation like one step like one stop like one, one stop, stop, stop shop yeah, yeah, yeah. one stop shop for everything um, because it's already awesome and uh, why right. to like look at something so if you have something official from the documentation the Kubernetes folks itself um, the amount of uh, issues that you'll run into would be later like less and then to find some R back randomly on the internet and they copy it and put it where it'll give access to every single thing and you would right. just like oh it worked so it's like it starts with an innocent POC like oh it works and right. then like you never intend to go back and change it I'm guilty of it I've done many times because well you intend to in, in, <laughs> you just never get to yeah but you always want to yeah, I, I, and then like there is less time, and you're always on like something um, when you're doing a POC or like on a deadline, telling like, oh, I want to like figure out what would work because mm-hmm. um, someone pays your check, check so right. you cannot always be researching or like uh, playing away with all these shiny new toys. Right. Uh, so like I have been guilty of that. So that is one of the goals that um, I personally tell myself that I want to like help make this thing better yeah, um, yeah. I it, more approachable simpler I was just gonna say actually um, for the benefit of the audience in case you have never heard it out loud our back is how you pronounce the acronym for role-based access control um, and uh, it's one of those things where um, you know like there's so many things that until you actually hear somebody say it you're like uh-huh. oh I don't you know I, I don't know how to pronounce that in my head um, so that's why I wanted to just offer that uh, so so okay so rolling back to the talk so you're giving a talk about the documentation for our back are you is it what what is it you're you're leading exactly so it's it's uh, for the entire project so it's just not uh, gonna so I will talk about the documentation sub project but this 
the cube cons highlight oh, is going to okay. be on the assessment so the six security um, has like um, three or four sub projects audit that does the kubernetes audit mm -hmm. which is really really important because um, we need to know where we also like even a big project can have it's like a uh, little fall so we need mm -hmm. to be on top of it so that project helps with that and there is this uh, security tooling sub project where um, like recent achievement of that it's automated CV list so website didn't have the automated community CV list and you have to be subscribed to um, the uh, mailing list and mailing list and I just um, control all uh, like all delete them so right, i select right. all and delete them so <laughs> yeah, yeah. need to find a place where you can have it as a feed or something so those are the kind of what the tooling does and then there is documentation that um, you heard about and there is also self-assessment mm -hmm. so each sub like each uh, individual or like related project to kubernetes can come in and like uh, get uh, the threat modeling threat modeling done and like um, some reports and stuff like that so this year's highlight is going to be that Last KubeCon was documentation highlight, so we talked in depth, in detail about like the entire sub project. This time it's gonna be like five to ten minutes, quickly saying like what was the, the things that was done between the last KubeCon, this KubeCon, gotcha. and like what we are planning to work in the next few months. Mm -hmm. um, because it's it's nice to have little goals. Yeah. I'm not saying that it has to be done or like completed because everyone has got their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, but so the, 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 those are the things that I'll be like highlighting in the talk. It's and the other thing that I want to like talk about when I talk about SIG security, it um, really warms my heart because the uh, coaches uh, put so much effort into making that a safe, sp uh, safe place for anyone and everyone. That mm -hmm. is my inspiration that I took from that uh, and put it in the conveyor community to make sure that I bring it along. It's, right. it's not per se like a thing that you write down or it's not a rule or it's, it's the... It's like, uh, how do I say, it's a quality or uh, something that you learn and oh, yeah. Yeah. and practice. I'm trying to think of a word for I, that. I can't yeah. think of the word yeah. for that. I'm like... Uh, yeah, kind of like a value or like a, yeah. I don't know, it'll probably come to me in like three hours. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, that was the word we were looking for. <laughs> So, yeah, so the, the, these are the things that I'm like doing um, right now. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm excited about this KubeCon because I have a few free days where I'm just going to go sit back and watch my friends talk. Nice. Nothing else. Yeah, that is definitely nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I find conferences are significantly more relaxing after my talk. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, but uh, yeah, I'm always like stressed out up until then. Yep, yep. Like, last time I was so stressed out that I forgot my laptop in the hotel room. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it was in, like, Valencia, in the hotels were, like, so far. It's not, yeah. like, walking distance. Yeah, I actually, because I was thinking about going, and I, I thought the same. I was like, it's, a like, a 20-minute ride to, from the hotel to the conference. This is, like, kind of ridiculous. <clears throat> yep. So, and then they didn't have taxis. So, it's not, like, here. They don't have that many taxis. The entire oh. city um, or the town had like 100 or 150 taxis. That's oh, about wow. it. And they also had some huge match or something like game um, mm. going on at the same time. So like it was very, very hard <laughs> to get a taxi. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. Um, and they had their own um, taxi app, um, like a Uber or something. Mm -hmm. That was also very unreliable because they kept canceling on you. Because <laughs> like, right. um, yeah. It yeah. was hard. Yeah. Um, but, uh, like you learn few words along the way. It was fun. I really loved. Like it was. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. Like, I would love yeah. to go back for I, a vacation. I haven't been to Valencia. I was in uh, Sevilla uh, not that long ago, and yeah, I like I really wanted to go on that trip, and um, I was going to take my wife, and we we're going to like have like a bit of a vacation, or whatever. And then she went and took a job, which uh -huh. she hasn't had in I don't know how many years. Um, and uh but you know it was a brand new job so she wasn't gonna like ditch for like a week and a half yeah, to go yeah. uh and i was like oh because it would have been so much fun um so uh i don't know but i might be able to drag her to KubeCon amsterdam maybe you know we can go to that uh but yeah i really liked uh the south of spain i hear valencia is different but still that i had never been there until i went to like I said sevilla a couple of years ago 
it, it, it's it was beautiful it was my first um europe uh, trip so i'm just gonna be like all oh, awesome yeah, about yeah, it yeah. and they have the best oranges and orange yeah. juice in the entire world yeah so that was something nice and I like I the mean, there art is a type scene. of orange yeah. named after the place, right? Yeah, so. yeah. I like their um, art scene. I really like checking out art wherever I go. I, mm. I don't. On that note, have you walked around this beautiful city uh, downtown? And have you seen the murals? I've seen some of the murals. Yeah, oh um, not God. a ton, but I did. I walked around a lot on Sunday, um, and yeah, it's funny because I was here like 15 years ago for uh-huh. like a sales call, uh-huh. and. I, it's like a stark difference um and yeah like there's one right there yeah. the uh, you know the elephant on the wall i mean there there's a lot of cool uh like there's a lot of cool kind of hidden art you know yep, like yep. You, you have to be like paying attention um so i'm sure i've missed two-thirds of it you know but yeah it's it's really quite cool it's so beautiful i was like oh my god um Oops. it's it's it it feels like everything has a meaning to to it and it's um it's, I wouldn't call everything a super abstract too. Mm-hmm. So um, I could spend hours just staring at them and like... Yeah, just uh, kind of walking around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did that on Sunday too a little bit. And then like I'm hoping that Friday I'll get to do a little bit because yeah. I really wanted to go to the Eastern um, Market, something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I went, by, I went by a sign for it. Um, yeah, I think it was Eastern Market. It's supposed to be really cool. Um, one of the other people who's involved in the show, Tam, um, uh-huh. she said uh, one of her trips here, she went uh, and said it was really awesome. Um, like she, we were literally just talking about it last night or earlier today. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm sorry that my trip is like super tight, but yeah, yeah, because uh, otherwise I would I would definitely do the same. But I have to give a lecture on Thursday, so yeah. um, that's always fun too. Yeah. I mean, I would just fret if I have to like stand in front of like so many kids, <laughs> yeah. students. Yeah, you do kind of get the hang of it um, after a bit, and you know, and it's it's a little, it's a lot easier if you've if you've already taught the class. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, even so, you know, every every group of students right goes at a different pace. Yeah. So I can't just like recycle the old slides immediately and just pop it up. I gotta like work through it and figure out what exactly I'm gonna say and like which. What, what does this group of students seem to be having more trouble with than uh-huh. that group of students? It was like really interesting. Like my first semester teaching it, the students um, really were not wrapping their head around like types of graphs. Uh-huh. Um, and, and so I kind of, the second semester, I made it kind of a hyper focus and then all of the students seemed to get it just fine. And so I'm not sure if I was teaching it better or if it was just, you know, so I don't, it's been a, it's been a really interesting journey. Um, you know, teaching for a living. Um, but yeah, it's cool. And um, not to mention the vacation time that you would get over in the summer. Theory, so. In theory, uh, yeah. So the, um, what's funny is that um, because we, we run a, a summer like internship program uh-huh. and I'm pretty heavily involved with that. So yeah, I did not actually get very much of my summer off. I was, I was a little disappointed. Um, I was hoping to have some more break because there's a lot of software I want to build. Uh-huh. Um, you know, all open source, of course, but um yeah, finding the time is still very difficult. I'm hoping this summer will be more sane. Um, because I think we, like everybody else, um, have had the you know, pandemic being over uh, turnover. Uh-huh. So, you know, we lost a lot of people, um, you know, and have to replace a lot of people and, you know, don't even have all the people hired that we need. Mm-hmm. And the organization I'm with is like doubling in size every mm-hmm, year mm-hmm. um so it's been it's been a little crazy but yeah. we're getting there um, yeah I, I see a lot of intake uh, in stem i see a lot of people showing interest in stem these days yeah. so um when i went for grad school the that particular semester there were like 300 to 400 computer science uh, master graduate students mm-hmm. and then the next semester there were like 600 or 700 oh, wow. like yeah. like it was just like doubled in like yeah. less than a year yeah right, um, right so yeah i can imagine like it must be like crazy busy well we're yeah so it's it's we're getting a lot of more students and then um on top of that but uh, like it's a new department right okay. so we're doing data science and uh and so we you know our first freshman class was this fall mm-hmm. um and we took i don't know something like 100 new freshmen but i think we want to like 
double and triple it, but we also need faculty members to mm -hmm. teach the classes. So we had it, we added like seven new faculty members last semester, um, and we're going to add another seven. Um, and while that doesn't sound like a big number for like you know like Red Hat or whatever, like normally a, a department adds like a person every year, maybe mm -hmm. a person every two years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so adding seven is like a lot, a lot. <laughs> it's kind of it's been kind of crazy. Uh, well, so we're just about here. Uh, so, you have to say thanks so much for your time. Um, Thank you. And for uh, I hope you enjoyed the drive. Oh, I really loved it. As long as I didn't have to drive it, it right. was like really, really enjoyable. So, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. And Always um, glad to do it. Um, I'm looking forward to all the awesome things that KBEI is going to do. Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, you do co-host the KBEI show. Yep. So maybe the next time we do something like this, we're going to make you actually drive people around or whatever we decide to do. As um, long as you're going to be in the parking lot. Right, right exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks. Thank you so much.